Robots Radio presents. Hi there, and welcome to the Hidden Pixels Podcast, a show sharing those gaming stories you might have missed on your first playthrough. I'm your host, Sebastian Azaro. On this very special episode, we have an interview with ZeldaDungeon.net's Andy Spiteri. Andy's also the co-host of the Champions Cast podcast, a Zelda-focused podcast that is one of the best. I hope you enjoy the interview, and I'll be back afterwards to wrap up some show notes. Hey there, and uh, welcome to the Hidden Pixels podcast. I'm your host, Sebastian Azaro, and we have a very special episode for you today. Uh, today we have a special guest uh, from Z- ZeldaDungeon.net and the Champions Cast podcast. Uh, we have Andy Spiteri. Andy, how are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing good, Sebastian. How's it going, man? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, doing good, doing good. I'm uh, I'm enjoying uh, this early, early... Uh, night weeknight i guess i'm in the middle of moving so everything's kind of hectic um but you said as you mentioned before we went on you're in the middle of wedding planning so i think you're you're just as scattered as i am right now (laughs) yeah pretty much 24 or 7 uh until i get married which isn't for another 16 months so oh wow i didn't realize all right you're in it for the long haul after that too so this is yeah practice (laughs) yeah um all right are you uh so I sent over and you took a listen to our latest episode on Hidden Pixels, which involves Zelda's uh, Postman and looking at his different iterations. Um, And tonight we're going to talk about them and go through his different iterations and try to figure out um, his different lore, different ideas about the Postman. Sounds good. Sweet. sweet. Uh, But before we even get to that, um, I want to learn a little bit more about Andy Spiteri. I want to get down and dirty with you a little bit. Um, So what you are part of the Zelda Dungeon.net. You're part of the Champions cast. How'd you get into um, into video games? How'd you get started? How'd you find the site? uh, Get involved with Zelda? Give us a little bit of your history for my listeners. Um, I I mean, I was uh, I was pretty much born with a uh, controller in my hand of some sorts. I I had a Super Nintendo growing up. I started out with like Super Mario World. And uh, I mean, from from there I was hooked. I I was always like a gamer growing up. Um, When I played Ocarina of Time for the N64, that's kind of when I turned the curve and like really started to to view video games more as like, um, more as like an art rather than just like a a nice, you know, waste of time or something that was fun that you played for a little bit. And, um, like I, it's it's really been like a lifelong um, passion of mine, and in particular, Nintendo games. I've always kind of gravitated towards them. Um, Mario and Metroid are are probably my my you know some of my most favorite series ever, and uh, maybe I'll throw in like Pokemon and stuff in there. But uh, you know the my my one true love, of course, is Legend of Zelda. Um, I've played. Like man, I, I've played so much Zelda in my lifetime. Uh, you know, I, I make an effort to play at least a couple of different Zelda games a year, just to just like refresh myself for the experiences. Um, to the point where, yeah, I started uh, I started writing for Zelda Dungeon, and it was actually Zelda Informer at the time. Uh-huh. And uh, this was this was right before Breath of the Wild came out, and Zelda Informer uh, was looking for writers. And Zelda Informer and Zelda Dungeon used to be two separate sites, but they were owned under, or they were owned by the same guy. So um, I joined the team there, spent uh, spent a couple months writing news, writing just basically like thought pieces, uh, opinions, and stuff like that. And um, at the time, our editor in chief uh, stepped away from the site as the Zelda Informer and the Zelda Dungeon sites were moving together. So um, you know, I, I realized that I just absolutely you know, I I loved the the job. I loved the people there. I loved the you know I loved Legend of Zelda. So I was like, I want to do that. And uh, uh, luckily, uh, the owner of the site, uh, Masi's Hagopian, was uh, was gracious enough to to give me the ball and uh, let me run with it. And so, yeah, that's how I got started at Zelda Dungeon. And then, um, you know, we used to have a podcast, 
a Zelda Informer podcast back in the day, and it, uh, I think it went about 54 episodes and kind of fell by the wayside. And I, I decided that I wanted to uh, to get that going again. So um, I rounded up a few people from the site. I was like, hey, let's uh, let's do this thing. Get a mic and uh, let's just start talking about Zelda because you know it's pretty much what we do anyways. A lot of nights we're just in chat talking about Zelda anyway, so we might as well record it. And uh, that's uh, that's how the Champions that's, Cast was born. That's awesome. Uh, that's it's great that you could you were so involved and you like you knew that you had this passion for this series and you could there was this outlet to go to. The sites were already there and that you could just uh, invest as much time as you saw f- you saw fit to begin with, and then finding out that you like it and enjoy it. It's it's really cool that when you find that community of people that you can um, yeah. kind of latch onto and have these discussions with. Yeah, totally. And like before I started at Zelda Dungeon, I, I never really thought of myself as a writer. And in certain aspects, I like I still don't. I'm just a guy who likes Legend of Zelda, and I you know have a platform <laughs> to share some thoughts about it. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was. It's been really fantastic uh, experience. I met uh, you know a lot of my, a lot of I would say honestly some of my best friends now are are you know people that I've met at the website, and uh, you really. You couldn't ask for for a better bunch of people. I think like we have uh, we have our marathon coming up in July, and I am just like mm-hmm. so stoked to to see everybody again because I haven't seen them since last year. So pretty that's, jazzed that's awesome. That. Yeah, being able to to get together, especially I know I have a group of friends from back in college, and we do um, fantasy baseball, and we get together once a year, and it's kind of like a reunion in that sense where you're not just getting together for the one event. You're I mean you are getting together for that event, but you also it's for the camaraderie it's to see everybody again catch up and it's that kind of community building that like it really makes these kind of things like these these especially zelda with the, the series that it has so special um oh, yeah 100 percent. yeah um and in getting more responsibilities with the site did you find did you find that challenging at all um not to go like next level a little bit but did you find any more difficulties in doing that i know that if i um, sometimes you could feel like it's another job um and would you were you worried that you were going to get sick of it i i wasn't worried that i was going to get sick of it because like i said i i really enjoyed the people and um and the you know the day-to-day interactions with with everybody like the the fans in our discord and and their my peers and our fellow staff and stuff like that it was definitely um it was definitely a a challenge that like i said there were there were two sites that were merging into one so there was definitely kind of a transition period where you know our our editor in chief at the time was moving on to a different project so you know one eye was kind of on one thing and uh, the other eye maybe both eyes should have been on zelda dungeon but uh, so it, it was it was a little bit more responsibility but i guess like um in my like in my professional life i'm my my job title is manager so it wasn't like it wasn't like anything that I wasn't used to, I guess, like that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm usually a pretty, pretty organized fellow sometimes, except for my house, which is a mess. But uh, nice. you know, yeah. <laughs> work-wise, I'm I'm kind of organized. So right. uh, it was just kind of a lining, lining up what we had and just uh, clearly communicating. And it it never really felt, it never really felt like work, I guess. And it still doesn't feel like work because you know we'll we'll have monthly meetings, but really it's just like you know, we power through the stuff that, uh, that we need to talk about. And then it's just kind of goofing around or, or playing super smash bros or something like that. So, right. um, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, that they'll kick me out before I leave, put it that way. <laughs> well, that's the ideal job. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> doing, doing what you love. <laughs> You're going to retire with the, uh, with a, um, Hillian crest on your chest. <laughs> Either that or uh, or a tingle suit on my grave. One of the oh, the there two. it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Um, all right, awesome. Um, so do you want to start talking, Postman? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm ready to follow your lead here. Let's do it. All right, yeah. Um, I figure we'll just run through the games a little bit, just a quick review, or maybe a thought or two on each iteration, and then uh, after that, maybe we'll pick our favorite, our least favorite, and then uh, I. I there's just like this idea of whether these guys they all have similarities they all have differences but are they are they related in some way is there some reason why there's always this wacky postman around uh maybe we can at the end we can just kind of come back to that question and uh and try to see if if we found any sort of or what 
what what what we think of that theory after examining them again. I'm, um, I am ready to talk some postman here. All right, let's go. Uh, <laughs> so actually, I wanted to start because the first iterations weren't technically postman. Um, so you have um, the first one on our list is from Link to the Past and Ocarina. There was the Running Man. And so I, I just wanted to get your thought on where you think this guy fits in. Is he, every time you see him in Link to the Past, when you see him, he's constantly running away from you. He thinks you're the the bane of of Hyrule uh, and kidnap the princess. And Ocarina, he's worried about chasing bunnies and running all over the field. Um, but he's not delivering letters. There's no official title here. But he does. It's kind of like the the this is the basis of where the future running man, I mean the future postman comes from. So, what do you think? Do you think we add these guys in here? Are they in the running for our the quote unquote running, pun intended? Uh, hey, <laughs> hey, um, yeah, uh, I, I think that they are. Um, okay. I I feel like these two are are actually more more fitting in that sense maybe then um some of the postmen from uh from phantom hourglass and spirit tracks which we'll get to in a bit but yeah i think that without these guys there uh, there might never be the postman as we know and love so yeah i think they definitely belong in this category they're, they were kind of like the og they you have to out of respect alone you have to put them in there i think it, yeah absolutely yeah yeah um, um so if the, the guy from link to the past i uh I, I didn't have too many thoughts on him, but I will say I always felt that it was extremely satisfying when you finally got your Pegasus boots and you you finally were able to rush him with your sword and just oh, yeah. finally catch him because uh, yeah he just he runs away from you all the time. It's like come on man, do you really think I'm the bane of high rule here? Come it's on, so frustrating. And you're right, it is so satisfying catching up to him, only for him not to. Uh, I, 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 now I don't remember. Does he believe that you're not once you catch him? I think he's still scared of you at that point because he continues to run away even after. Uh, you I, I think him. he gives you some line about how, oh, yeah, I guess you couldn't be uh, the, the evil Scrooge of Hyrule, but uh, yeah, he, he does run away from you after. So it's kind of like maybe he just right. doesn't like you. I don't know. Yeah. He's, what, he's got issues, of... which most of the postmen do. So yeah, he fits right in. He fits right in. <laughs> Um, and then I, I love the Ocarina running man. He, uh, finding him, uh, because you find him after you get the three spiritual stones. So I know the first time that I, um, that I played through the game, I was like 10. And much like you, you were saying, it, it was the first game that kind of opened up my eyes to what video games could be. And they could be this grand um, like masterpiece of a game of art where you're going on this adventure in this uh, engrossing world that just captured my 10 year old self and, and took me away. But like uh, my first run, I don't think I saw the running man um, when I was a child because I went straight for uh, Castle Market Town once I got that third spiritual stone. Um, and that's when he appears. So um, he's kind of like an Easter egg at the at the first part when you're when you're a child. And then finding him when you're an adult again and racing him, it just, it ties it all together so well. Um, his like small vignette of a story that travels over these seven years. Um, I just, I don't know. He's always had a special place in my heart. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm i with you. I, I like him, uh, especially for the reasons that you laid out, but also just for the simple fact of when you are, like you just kind of said, like Ocarina of Time was that game that kind of, um, kind of showed you what video games could be. And uh, I'll never forget just running in Hyrule Field, which already to, you know, to us as as younger uh, children is pretty spectacular when you're running through a field that has you know, this day and night cycle and stuff like that. It feels like yeah. you're really living it. And then to see um, the running man, like running in this field, it's just like, like wow, th there's actual, there's people um, that are populated in this, in this place. Like it, it feels like a real live, world and of course later games would do this would do this as well and maybe do it better but like i'll never forget the first time running into him in the in the open field and uh mm. you know just being like oh man there's there's another guy there and then you sell him <laughs> your mask for an insane amount of money which is also kind of nice but uh, money, yeah, I, yeah i really enjoy him i was yeah. i was convinced convinced that there is a way to to beat him in that race and yet every time he beats you by a single second 
so this was it, the game came out like right at the I guess the dawn of the internet era of of those internet secrets that you couldn't confirm or not like you couldn't tell what was true what wasn't you would go to school and kids in the schoolyard would be saying things and you're like searching the internet on the three sites and trying to figure out whether this was true or not and i had to go back now to see if you could beat him and there are still so many fake videos of people claiming you can beat the running man <laughs> in the race and um that I, I just find it funny that it's still i it people have glitched out the game over and over again. So obviously you can make it look like that, but it's, it brought me back to those days where it's like, Oh, you're talking about um, missing no in Pokemon and trying to beat the yeah. man in, the, <laughs> in Ocarina. So or maybe, it, or maybe the famous, uh, you can unlock Sonic and Tails and super smash bros melee. If you beat a hundred people in cruel melee or something like yeah. that, that was one of my <laughs> yeah. favorites from back in the day. And you're just wasting hours trying to do it just to find out. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, so so that running man, he goes directly into uh, the, the Majora Mass, Majora's Mass Postman, um, the same character model pretty much um, because they reused a bunch of them in Majora's due to the time crunch. Um, but I have to say that I think this is my favorite. I'm going to spoil alert for the end when we pick our favorites. This is my favorite of of the Postman. Uh, just Majora's Mask with the schedule, with everything, everybody in the town being on a certain schedule and seeing coming out of the clock and seeing the running man run to that. Um, first, I think you see Kathy run to the run to the post box and then you see the running man, uh, the postman come by and grab the letter. It's just it's opening your eyes that everybody's like everybody's living. It's it's what you were saying when you see the running man in Ocarina, you realize this is a living world. And then you walk into Clock Town in Majora's Mask and you're like, this is it completely fulfilled on this system. This is mm -hmm, yeah. the definition of a living town. Um, and I, I feel like he kind of epitomized that with his schedule, his adherence to the schedule and his story that went all the way through. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it may be it may be boring or cliche to say, but like this is this is my favorite version of the Postman, too. It's uh, you know, you like you said, you get to see this real world and the the real like the minutia of all the different characters and stuff like that. But you know, this is this is probably my favorite version of the Postman, also because it's the it's the most fleshed out. Um, you, you kind of get to know the Postman a little bit. I think his um his character arc, uh, the angle of him being you know terrified of staying in Clock Town with the moon about to to crash down. And mm -hmm. uh, you know him, him wanting to leave, but being so duty bound that he he can't leave is I think it was a really compelling story, and you really empathize with him. And uh, you know, at the end of the couple's mask quest, when you when you finally release him from his duty to stay in Clock Town, um, mm -hmm. I, I thought that was a really great moment. I didn't really like I didn't like his mini game a whole lot in that game, and I the postman's no. hat wasn't the greatest, but uh, his his story leading up to that I thought was really. Uh, fantastic and uh he was really he was a great character i thought in that game he was a standout character i thought for sure in in a game that had so many standout characters and stories i mean it's a real character study in general with all the different townspeople going around and each having their own kind of adventure throughout the three days but you're right his stood out I, he was the reason why i wanted to do this episode because that story is just so compelling of him going through and you know, like you said the balance between duty and literally saving himself from being crushed it's uh it, it seems absurd but they make it seem so so genuine in the game um it's 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 great it's one of the best side stories i've seen i mean in zelda but I, it's one of my favorite in games because of when i came up when I when I experienced it, I guess when I was younger, it, it was something that wasn't necessary for the story, uh, but it was a full on fleshed out story that you could go and find. So yeah, it, uh, I uh, I think that that side quest is, like you said, I think it's maybe if not my favorite side quest in video games. Like it's it's got to be in the top three. Like that, there's a lot of of moving parts in that couple's mask side quest from oh, yeah. Anju and Cafe to the postman to the burglar. Like what what you do it at various points definitely affects how the whole thing unfolds and and to layer that side quest so meticulously and have it play out so well and in so many like different 
you can go branch down different paths to get different rewards in that side quest. It's um it's a really spectacular side quest and it manages to to really shine a light on about probably about like four or five characters and really flesh them out in uh, in one simple side quest. So yeah, it's it's a it's a fantastic um piece of business that Majora's Mask did. Definitely, definitely. So he, he'll I'm saying he's my favorite right now. He'll be hard to beat. I'll leave my mind. I'll leave the door a little bit open. We can we can discuss as we keep going, but he, he's going to be hard to top. Um, okay, so next we have the Oracles of Ages. Um, this guy, this postman, he wasn't in it much. Uh, he was part of the trading sequence where you needed to give him a poke clock. He was kind of the two the 2D handheld version. Um, I guess the most simplified version of the Majora's Postman, because he was talking about his schedule and keeping time, but he just kind of stood in one place. I don't know if you had any thoughts on this one, but he uh, he's just kind of, I mean, they could have put anybody in that position, um, but they chose the Postman, which was cool that they kept the thread going. Yeah, I think that this one was like definitely fan service um, or, or like a, a nice cameo. Like like Oracle mm -hmm. of Ages also had some of those weirder characters like the uh, the hand in the toilet and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, he, he was, he's kind of forgettable in this game. But I, I think if you look at it from the, uh, the viewpoint of, of a cameo, then it's it's fun. But uh, yeah, I, you know, without doing some research into Postman, I would have probably forgot that he was even in this game. So. Um, a solid cameo, but not really much else to it. It's a good way of putting it, the ca cameo, because like you said, they had a bunch of a bunch of different characters uh, from different games too. Uh, I mean, you had the the goddesses, and you had Impo was around um, characters that repeatedly make appearances. But then having these Majora's Mask characters as well was was pretty fun. Yeah. Um, but I think we can move on. Uh, let's try Minish Cap is next. Um, and actually, I got to make a confession. I have not played, I've watched Let's Plays, but I have not played any of the Minish Cap. Um, I think you, there's uh, something involving the stones. I don't know if if you have more experience. I, I, you've played Minish Cap. Do you have more experience with the Postman in that one? Uh, yeah, so he is, um, he's he's relegated just to the central town, um, Hyrule Town. And uh, he, he does kind of run around actually, but he doesn't, uh, he doesn't have this this really giant lap. You can you can go and fuse kinstones with him uh, at a later point in the yep. game once you get through your kinstone bag, and once you do, uh, one of the sword dojos opens up and you can go and train there and um, and get some stuff. But this is another it's another one where like he's kind of it's it's not quite a cameo, but he he doesn't really have anything you know super central to the story. But it is nice to actually see him like zipping around in uh, Hyrule Town. So I, I like him. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. It the way he looked, he had a similar animation, I think, to um Link to the Past. So kind of like a throwback to that running man where he's running mm -hmm. around and you, you have to kind of kind of get in his way or catch him. Um that I was I was reading on um shameless plug Zeldadungeon.net about uh this this postman and he um it says something about writing newsletters and you collect newsletters in that game. Um but I don't know if that was even an integral part. Um, it says that um, I, I think you do the last oh man the last at least half a dozen times I've played Minish Cap I've been trying to finish it as quickly as I can so I haven't <laughs> I haven't went too crazy with the side quest but now wow. that you say okay. it that's that's ringing a bell um, but yeah just to just to touch on the uh, the visual style I actually just want to like maybe talk up Minish Cap just for a quick sec because it's got like a really oh, I, I think it's a really nice kind of mix between Wind Waker and Link to the Past whereas like Wind Waker, sometimes the characters can look a little goofy. And uh, sometimes, you know, goofy can be really fun sometimes, but also it's just like, what the other times? And uh, it, it meshes really well with the Link to the Past style. So Minish Cap is actually the low-key, probably one of my uh, favorite titles in the series visually. Yeah, it's, it's funny how when Wind Waker came out, everybody was kind of taken aback about how cartoony it looked. Um, but now Zelda, the series has kind of worked within different shades or different, uh, it's it's almost like a spectrum now rather than cartoony versus realistic. It's somewhere in between where they place every game. And this is, like you said, every time I see this game, it's like, it's impressive how they found that balance and how they're finding that balance and of the two and so making it look like a beautiful game, especially for a handheld game. It was, it, it 
it really is enjoyable. Mm -hmm, yeah, watch. it still looks quite good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, sweet. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's keep going. All right, so I I added one uh, for the Wind Waker. There's a post office there, and I added Kaboli to the to the story that we had. Um, because he does have this mini game and he has like a little bit of interaction with Link. But I thought the most interesting fact was I think it's on a, a trophy or a collectible where it says that uh, postmastering or, or mailmanning has been in his family for centuries, which is a tie back, I think, to Majora's Mask or to Ocarina. I'm trying because that directly ties to Ocarina, Wind Waker does um timeline wise or one of the timelines but it um i just thought it was cool that they would put it in that this this mailman this rito um postman was related somehow to previous generations of postman and it would be fun to tie those into other ones and figure out which one he actually is related to yeah there, there's a lot of that uh, that really fun stuff in uh, in the wind waker that i think it does really well and and once you saw like the Rito as a postman, it uh, it really just made all the sense in the world. Like that really is like the perfect version of a, of a postman. Yeah, <laughs> he. Uh, it, it's funny how his character model too is is slightly similar to the Majora's Mask, Ocarina, Postman, Running Man. Well, all the other ones have like larger beaks and look a little more bird like. He like looks like a person in a bird costume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of funny how they try to tie the two together. Yeah. Yeah, um, probably my favorite, uh, my favorite, I guess, postman moment in Wind Waker is um, the the Rito postman. I, I think it's a different one, but uh, I can't. I think his name is like Ilari or, or uh, something like that. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you you find him as part of the Maggie's letter side quest. And I remember him showing up and like there's that uh, that love letter that was sent out, and Maggie ends up kind of crushing on a Moblin. And I thought the whole thing was really fun, and it was um, it was one of the more notable i guess letter quests that uh, that i could think of when i was thinking of zelda so i always had a, a soft spot for that quest yeah and uh, ilari yeah he i just up looking it up now he definitely was a more prominent part of that that uh that game and it, it was funny how they integrated in dragon roost they all like the rito really took that as part of their culture like delivering the letters around um, so it was just funny to see how it's evolved over time, this idea of the postman. So hundreds of years in the future, there's still, there's still some people carrying around the legacy of carrying letters to Link. <laughs> so yeah. like after they all that. got to get time, there on time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, all right. And that yeah. brings us to, to Twilight Princess, where this, he was definitely the most fun to play in the episode, um, in our episode about the postman. But this is definitely the strangest one. I mean, from his vocals to the way he's dressed, he is kind of like, I don't know, somebody cosplaying as the postman, but in a really strange way. Uh, do you have any thoughts on Twilight Princess one? He is, he shows up in the weirdest places and you don't really interact with him. Um, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> what are I, your thoughts on this guy? I, I feel like this version of the postman is like related somehow to Dead Hands, that creepy enemy in Ocarina of Time that would oh. pop up in the Shadow Temple. And he had all those hands that popped up. This he looks he looks <laughs> like he he just sprung out of like Nightmare Before Christmas. Um he has this like god awful hey yeah. and it's like it's it just makes my it makes my bones shiver when I hear that. Um, I, I don't know. He's not my favorite version of the Postman. He, um, you know, at Twilight Princess in general, I think that the art style didn't really connect with me. It, it was just a little bit too, too dark, like literally dark and uh, gritty for me. So th yeah, this version, he, he looks like, he looks weird. He, he looks definitely strange. Um, and I think that like the gimmick of him hiding around the world where he was, you know, kind of behind the throne in uh, Zora's domain or right. or in the bar or anything like that. I think that that would have been better, like, if you got something for finding him. But you don't really, so it's just kind of a wasted opportunity, I think. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. His creepy, his creepy calls just, uh, you know, I, I hear them sometimes when I can't sleep, and it's terrifying. <laughs> you have to, you have to, yeah, <laughs> get up, yeah. Well, shake it off, take a shower. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> 
he it's it's so strange that they made that choice too because he's tracking it down and like you said like the different finding him in the different areas you find him in Ordon Ranch you find him in uh, I think Kakariko and he's just kind of like screwing up all the time whenever you talk to him he's like just not very good at his job and it's just I I don't really understand the point it, I guess it's comic relief in such a dark game but it just comes off as like tonally strange when he yeah because like, like you end up feeling he, bad for him because he's not a very good postman so it's right, not even that yeah. funny right so he's not yeah, doing yeah, i don't know good, right he's stuck ah uh, man he uh he's definitely memorable but i uh, yeah i don't think he's one of my favorites either memorable he's, he's got to be like maybe one of the most memorable i'll give him that yeah maybe not for the right reasons but uh, definitely memorable no yeah he he needs to get his act together a little bit yeah. Um, more time and, delivering less time hiding that's it that's it <laughs> and actually yeah. finding his people that he's trying to deliver to yeah um and that brings us that brings us to phantom hourglass and spirit tracks i put these two kind of together because the guy the postman's pretty similar in the two but um i actually i haven't played again i haven't played many of the handhelds um and i haven't played either of these but i've seen images i've seen what he does he kind of from what i gather he kind of just stands there and reads out your letters to you but those letters don't really have any bearing on the game. Um, he's kind of looks, he has a different art style. Uh, in one, in Phantom Hourglass, yeah. he has things. In Spirit Tracks, he doesn't. Yeah, what What do you think? Yeah. Uh, is, he uh, definitely uh, looks very different. He feels very different from other iterations of the Postman, which kind of goes to where I was saying before, like, like I view the Running Man as, as more of a Postman than you know these guys even though they're officially called postman and the you know if you go to zelda wiki you know you'll you'll find them under postman but the they don't really they don't really fit like the other ones fit um and yeah the the whole thing in phantom hourglass where he would read your letters to you is uh is kind of, it was kind of weird but like whatever um at least it, it was kind of memorable but i did like in spirit tracks how they uh how they kind of had the postman just hand you letters and say like oh my predecessor used to read them out loud but people thought it was rude i thought that that was funny but um other scary. than that yeah they're not like they're not too central to the game they can they deliver you letters here and there but nothing nothing really important i don't think i i probably would have forgotten about the postman and spirit tracks again if i you know didn't remember to look them up in preparation for this yeah it's 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 strange how the he got kind of relegated back in those games um and he looks yeah he does look kind of different he looks almost like a like a mole or a mouse or something i don't know it's 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 yeah. a little strange definitely not my favorite take on it um and i think that's where that's it i am i have a confession to make i am only halfway through breath of the wild i finally got my hands on it about two weeks ago after years of waiting and how, I, are, how are you liking it oh man it is it's it's incredible. <laughs> it is. That's it is awesome. so incredible. It's it's everything. And so I waited two years to play it, um, not on purpose, uh, but just because I hadn't had time and didn't. I don't own a Switch. I borrowed one from my brother finally. And hearing all of this hype, I'm like, it can't match it. It can't match the hype that everybody. Everybody's saying it's the best game of all time. And I I started playing it, and it is. It really is. Um, they took the Zelda formula and evolved it in a way that just not only logically makes sense, but just is, is beautiful. They went back to their roots of how it is exploration and adventure and, um, and storytelling without the constraints where you're not, the game guides you, but it won't hold your hand and lets you do what you want to go do. Um, and kind of just allows you. I, I I'm rambling now about Breath of the Wild, which I'm sure has been done a billion times <laughs> over the past few years. But just experiencing it firsthand is just it's it's really incredible. So, but I did not see any postman in the Breath of the Wild yet. I'm only halfway through. But <laughs> uh, he does not show up in in Breath of the Wild. So I think we're we're all good there. We're clear. Um, but I will say I'm I'm really uh, you know I'm stoked that you're playing through it, and I'm almost jealous because I, I wish. That's one of those games I wish I could go back and and relive for the first time again. Because yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, what can you say that hasn't been said about Breath of the Wild? Exactly. Just what a what a spectacular game! It is it is fantastic. Um, 
So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go play that as soon as we're done here. <laughs> now you got me get you to play it again. <laughs> but that doesn't mean we're done. That doesn't mean we're done. We're gonna. Um, so I think we're kind of in agreement about Majora's Mask as far as the top guy as far as Postman go. Yeah, I I think it's hard to pick against that. You know, uh, Ocarina of Time's Running Man is. Uh, you know, I, I like him a lot. I think it's nice to see the Minish Cap Postman just kind of doing mm. his thing in a handheld format, but you really can't beat the uh, the the character arc and just the, you know, watching the Postman actually do his thing and deliver letters in Majora's Mask. Yeah, it, it is the most, like you said, the most fleshed out story, but also a great story in that. So having the combination of learning the most and actually having it be compelling is hands down the winner. Um, as far as worst postman, um, I I haven't experienced some of them. I would say maybe Oracle of Ages, only because you don't really he he doesn't need to be the postman, and he he kind of just stands there. Like you said, it's a cameo, and that makes me feel a little better about it. But I think he's just a little too simple for me in that. At least Twilight Princess, he's interesting. He's he's something. <laughs> Whereas uh, Oracle of Ages, he's just kind of a sprite that's standing there. Yeah, I, I could definitely uh, go with that. I, I was thinking about picking him, but um, I guess my thought is it's kind of short and sweet and it doesn't really intrude on my gameplay at the end of the day. I, I'm probably going to go with Phantom Hourglass uh, just because, and I kind of have a reputation for picking on the DS games in Zelda Dungeon, and I don't mean to, but uh, <laughs> here I am again doing <laughs> but it. But there you are. But yeah. uh, I'm just, you know, uh, he, uh, I don't know, he, he doesn't he doesn't feel like, like postmen of the past, which uh, you know you, you kind of get attached to after uh, playing them for for however many years, like almost ten years beforehand. And then he, when he reads you your letters out loud, it's also kind of annoying. So uh, you know, I, I hate I hate to say it, but it's uh, Phantom Hourglass for me. Guy, poor guy. And then he lo then he loses his wings. That guy can't win. <laughs> yeah, so it's a tough life being a postman. It is. It is. Um... So, uh, and the last question, I guess, before we drop this Postman topic, um, do you think there's any sort of relation between these guys? I think some of them have ties, but it doesn't seem like there's an, I don't think they're all related uh, to the same, I guess, family tree. Um, I think some of them, like like the mention in Wind Waker of the, the generations of being Postman before them, um the majoras and oracle there might be some sort of connection but those are two different completely two different universes so yeah I don't think they're related <laughs> um you you could probably argue you know in, in favor of like majora and oracle of ages kind of being connected you, you you could probably argue that maybe like you know the uh the rito and wind waker and uh phantom hourglass were together but um oh, yeah, for yeah. me I, I i almost like to think of them as just like um i don't want to say a running gig because i don't think that's right but like just uh just like that little nod or whatever kind of like how tingle just shows up in a bunch of different games you know and he he right. could just kind of travel through time and timelines and stuff at will and just show up wherever um so i i just i like having the postman in a game it's like a comforting familiar face if mm -hmm. that makes sense when you're nope. playing yeah. zelda so um you know i i think that you could you could probably find the evidence to link them. And uh, I, I think you could make that argument, but uh, you know, I'm okay with him just kind of like randomly showing up. Yeah, it's like how multiple Kakariko villages, multiple, you see the carpenters every once in a while and it's like, oh, those are those guys. And yeah, exactly. Kind of laugh at that. But it, no, I, I, I hear you. It's, it's nice to think that. And if he is like a Tingle character, I am really excited for Postman Royal Rupee Land. Uh, that's going to be a fantastic. Uh, so I, game. <laughs> I just finished playing Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land, and that game is even more insane than I originally thought. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you just uh, you just covered it on the Champions Cast, right? Uh, we did, yeah. So uh, I, I don't know if I should recommend people go listen to that. It's really strange. So <laughs> if you're if you're in the mood for weird Tingle stuff, check it out. But uh, if you're not, then maybe stay as far away from that as possible. Yeah, yeah. Pick a different episode. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh man. Well, thanks for thanks for for joining us, Andy, uh, and talking about this postman. This has been great. Um, yeah, I did want to I did want to end with a bunch of quick I guess quick questions, a fun little thing where I'm gonna throw a bunch of questions at you. 
you just come back and so people can get a feel of I guess I guess we do have some listeners. We at Hidden Pixels we touch a variety of different series. Um, we're at Yoshi, we do Mario, we do Elder Scrolls, um, but we do have a lot of diehard Zelda fans. Um, so to to show where you land on your feelings on some of the mo- more contested uh, Zelda topics, I have some quick questions for you. <laughs> so I, I, want- I am ready. All right, all right. I'm gonna answer as quick as you can. First thing that comes to mind. All right, all right you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, what is the best handheld Zelda title? Minish Cap. Okay. And what is the worst? Handheld? Phantom Hourglass. Okay. Uh, why is Ilya the worst? Uh, she scolds Link, adds nothing to the plot, and is just a, the definition of generic love interest. Really agreed. Uh, oh, so your, co- your co-host Taylor on uh, the Champions cast uh, why does he hate the wind waker um i i honestly don't think he does i think that he likes to have a controversial opinion and uh that's his and he is just finding ways to justify that controversial opinion because when grilled about it he really has no solid answer well, all right all right my next question was why is he wrong so i think that that sums it up as well <laughs> um Z- zora's or rito uh, Zora's because my cat is named Zora and I love her. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> uh, we'll play. We'll play the PG version of Kiss, Marry, Kill with Din, Ferrar, and Nehru. I butchered those names, but you get the. Oh man, uh, Mary, Ferrar, Kiss, Nehru, and I guess Kill Din. I'm sad to see Din go though. It's hard to pick. It's hard to pick which one to go. Yeah. Um, all right, last couple ones. Uh, what is your Zelda Dungeon Marathon? Um, so Zelda Dungeon Marathon is an event that takes place uh, every year. Um, the Zelda Dungeon staff gets together at uh, Mossoscopian, the owner of Zelda Dungeon. We get together at his house in Chicago, and we run through every single Zelda title uh, from start to finish. Some of the games are just like pretty standard races. Some of them are pretty intense uh speed fest glitch game breaking stuff that i can never do in <laughs> showcases mm-hmm. and uh, the goal is to raise money for the children's hospital hospital of illinois um through extra life charities so any donation that uh, that is made goes straight to them we sell merchandise that uh, that all the proceeds go straight to them as well and uh, you know it's just good time between a lot of people who love zelda and uh, who want to you know who who just who want to help out where they can and uh you know we have a lot of fun with that we have a lot of very really generous donors that uh, usually come back year after year and um you know that is in July and I'm really looking forward to that and you know if you're listening to this we are going to have some uh, announcements about that at the uh the end of May so check that out perfect perfect and can can people watch that on Twitch or yeah, they... you betcha. If you head over to uh, to Zelda Dungeons Twitch channel, uh, it'll be streaming for like ten days straight. So you can uh, you can definitely catch up uh, with us there. I'll be in Chicago for that. So yeah, really looking forward to that. Perfect. And uh, the last question that was kind of a gimme. Another gimme. Anything else you want to promote? Any where can we find you on social media? Um, if they want more Andy Spiteri in their life, where can our listeners go and find you? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> in the, in the least, you want So if you want, you know, if you want really, you know, bad opinions and uh, hockey tweets, you can, uh, you can check me out on Twitter. I'm at Spiteri316. Um, I co-host, like you, like you said, I co-host the Zelda Dungeon podcast, the Champions cast. And, um, I also co-host another podcast called Virtual Theater, which is uh, kind of a, a Zelda Dungeon spinoff, if you will. And uh, me and one of my friends from the site, uh, another editor, cover video game movies. So uh, we usually, each episode is a uh, an in-depth look at one particular movie. So we've covered like Street Fighter, um, Resident Evil, Assassin's Creed. And spoiler, most of these movies are pretty horrible. So we have kind of a good time. Uh, just hating ourselves covering these movies. So uh, you can check that out on Twitter at Virtual Theater X. Awesome. Awesome. Have you guys hit uh, Detective Pikachu yet? Uh, yes, we did. We recorded it last night, actually. So that episode is going to drop probably tomorrow or, or Friday or something like that. 
Um, I will say it to anyone listening that Detective Pikachu was so good. So good. <laughs> it's what everyone's saying. It has redeemed the genre of video game movie, which is nice to hear. Yes. <laughs> Until Sonic comes along and uh, oh, kills it again. But for right oh, now, man. we're riding high. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's enjoy it while we can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, thanks, Andy. Thanks for everything. Thanks for coming on, uh, talking to Postman. And, yeah, this, uh, was, this was awesome, Sebastian. Thanks. Yeah, no problem at all. And uh, we'll be in touch, and we'll look for you at ZeldaDungeon.net and the Champions Cast. You have a good night, awesome. man. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks again for having me. Take care. Yeah, you too. I want to give one last thanks to Andy for joining us on the show today. It was a great interview, and I hope you all go to ZeldaDungeon.net to check out all the great content there. Also, subscribe to the Champions Cast. It's a great source for all your Zelda news and reviews and lists and, well, just about anything Zelda-related. As for Hidden Pixels, we have one announcement. We have released our Patreon today at patreon.com slash hiddenpixelspodcast. If you want to support the show please log on and give as little as $1 monthly. Then you'll be open to get many of the exclusive benefits we have on the site, such as starring in your own episode, having a character named after you, or free entries into our giveaway. That's patreon.com slash hidden pixels podcast and consider supporting today. And that's it. Our regularly scheduled episode will release on Friday. So keep an eye out for that, and we'll see you then. Thanks. Hey friends, this is Robots, the creator of the Robots Radio Podcast Network and host of the two original shows on the network, the Fallout Lorecast and the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. These two shows have rocketed up the iTunes charts. They both together have over 155 star reviews in only a couple months with bite-sized episodes that take you step by step through the background of the games and the game worlds. They're thought-provoking, well-produced, and a lot of fun. I recommend you go check them out at robotsradio.net or on any podcast, reader, podcatcher, whatever you use, iTunes, Spotify. Again, that's the Fallout Lorecast and the Elder Scrolls Lorecast, available everywhere.